Sirikhoda is our correspondent live for us in Ajakale, uh, near Turkey's border with Syria. Let's just begin sort of with the latest updates, uh, Zeyna, on what we know uh, is happening on the ground near you. Well, positions of the Kurdish-led Syrian Democratic Forces are coming under heavy fire since the early hours of the morning, those positions being targeted by airstrikes, by Turkish artillery. Uh, Turkish troops on the ground, along with their allies, the uh, opposition Syrian National Army, they're still trying to make their way in advance into the two main towns in a 120-kilometer strip of territory, which has been really the focus of the ongoing operations, at least the first phase of this operation. So they're trying to make their way into Rasalain and Tel Abyad. The SDF is putting up a fight, fierce resistance. It is a difficult fight because it's street-to-street -street battles, uh, but there has been some uh, progress and advance on the ground. Uh, Turkish troops and their allies reached the strategic M4 highway. This highway connects east and west of Syria, but more importantly, if they're able to hold their position on this highway, they will divide the area under the control of the SDF in the northeastern corner of Syria. Of course, there are other roads, but this is the main highway linking their territories east of the Euphrates to the west of the Euphrates. So the fighting continues. The humanitarian impact of this conflict is being felt on both sides of the border. Syrian civilians have been reportedly killed in Turkish shelling, war, monitoring say, war monitors saying more than 20. But Turkish civilians as well have been killed in uh, cross-border fire, the SDF launching uh, rockets and mortars into Turkish border towns, killing almost 20 civilians in the past few days. Let's just uh, focus now on this incident near Kobane, which happened in the last 24 hours. It really has the Americans worried. It is deepening the crisis between these NATO allies. The relationship was strained before Turkey launched this offensive. Uh, and now the Pentagon really put it bluntly. It has damaged our, our relationship. The United States uh, uh, have been trying to pile pressure on Turkey to stop this advance. The incident you mentioned in Kobani, that is a Syrian border town not far from where we are. Uh, according to the U.S. Department of Defense, uh, their soldiers came under Turkish artillery fire. Uh, the Turkish Defense Ministry is, is insisting we did not hit that outpost. We were careful. What we were doing was responding to fire, and that fire was from a hill, 1,000 meters from the base. So it's not clear how this incident is going to, uh, if it's going to worsen uh, the relationship between these two countries. Already Washington is threatening uh, economic sanctions. They're calling them very significant economic sanctions if Turkey crosses the red line. So more and more pressure on the Turkish government to stop this uh, offensive. But the Turkish president made it very, very clear yesterday, despite the criticism, despite the threats, we are pushing ahead with this operation because for us, this is a question of national security. We will continue to monitor events with you in Ajakale. Uh, Zeyna, thank you. Let's uh, also cross over to uh, northern Iraq because protests against the Turkish offensive are taking place in Iraq's semi-autonomous Kurdish region. Bernard Smith is our correspondent in Erbil. Real concern there, Bernard, about what's going on in northeastern Syria, which is why you have the numbers of people behind you. Yes, so from what the crowds have been chanting here, there's clearly no love lost between the Kurds here and Turkey. The shouts of Erdogan terrorist, Erdogan terrorist have been echoing out here for the last hour or so. And there is also a real feeling of betrayal by the Americans, the people I've been speaking to before we uh, came to you live. They were saying they felt they feel betrayed. Uh, they feel let down overnight. There they were helping the Americans leading the Americans in the fight against ISIL, and suddenly it all changed. And now they've been left uh, to fight themselves against Turkey and to fight on new fronts against the Turkish incursion. And before, uh, well, as rather, Turkey's incursion into northeastern Syria started, the government here, its official line, was to look the consequences of military escalation have implications far beyond Syria's borders, creating the conditions for a return of ISIL and a mass displacement of people. There are already some 225,000 Syrian Kurds here uh, as a result of the conflict in Syria. More may cross if the fighting escalates, although they are mainly internally displaced uh, inside northeastern Syria at the moment. So, For that update, thanks. Bernard Smith there in Erbil.